All right, so now that we have the hair plates down, it's time to add a description to them. So this is what the hair looks like without the plates showing, with the plates showing, and then I'll just hide the hair. And to create a description, you select the plate you want to work on, go up to Create, Interactive Groom Splines, I'll call this Demo Hair, and most of these parameters you don't need to change. Um, this is a good way to have them set up, but a lot of them you can just change later. Uh, density you want to keep relatively low in the beginning, just enough so you can see where all the direction of the hairs are going, um, and how they're behaving, and then you can up your density later. Length 1 is good. The length is going to be determined mostly by our guides, so uh, the length isn't too important. And then the width scale, 0.01 is usually good. Sometimes I go up to 2 or uh, 0.015 is good for thicker hair. And then CV count is uh, like the number of vertices in the hair, the number of vertices that allows it to bend. And 5 is a good starting point. You can always up it. 5 is good for shorter hair. Um, but if it's shoulder length or longer, you probably want to go up to 10 or 15 or even more. Alright, so this is what we get starting off. Just uh, the hair just shoots off perpendicular to the plane on the z-axis. And the first thing that I do, well, let me switch to the interactive groom workspace. I, this is usually a little bit easier to navigate around. I usually don't switch my workspace, but uh, when I'm working with hair, I, I usually switch to this one. So the first thing I do is add a guide modifier. So this is great for just like getting the general shape of the hair. Um, and then I usually stack modifiers on top of that. You can just sculpt directly on the hair with a sculpt layer, but this is something I usually put on top later on uh, as a fine-tuning layer. Um, and it's easier just to get that general shape of the hair with the guides first uh, before you go crazy with the details. So the guides don't show up immediately. You have to go down to Create. And then it'll randomly populate your uh, hair plate based on the existing guides, or based on the existing primitives that are down. So if I had shaped some of this, let me delete these. So if I had sculpted on this, and then I created guides, those guides would then try to match um, what I had originally sculpted with the hair. So if you have a base hairstyle down that you did sculpt directly on the hair and then you wanted to just kind of save that snapshot you could use guides to do that but we don't need to do that right now so go to guides create guides and I'm actually going to delete all of these not the the entire guide description but I don't need this many guides Let me see, I think under in guide base, go to the density brush and make sure your operation is set to decrease. You could also, if it was on increase, you could just hold down alt and then I'm just going to get rid of all of these. And the other main reason I'm doing this is because I want to work symmetrically with fewer guides. Go back to the tribute editor, now that they're all gone, and you can select the place brush. And make sure you have edit clicked under your guides. Um, it can be really frustrating uh, if you're trying to sculpt on your hair or a certain hair layer and nothing's happening. Um, it usually is because you haven't clicked the, uh, the proper edit button. So now I'm just placing guides generally where I think um, they'll most be needed. And you can always go back in and add more guides later. But this is good uh, general spacing. And where the surface curves more, you're going to need more guides. 
And the trickiest part is usually around the ear because there's a sharp uh, dividing line of the hair going down on the sideburn area and then kind of there's a sharp transition to then curling around the ear. So that looks like good distribution for the guides for now. The next thing that I do is I go up to my length brush, make sure symmetry is active on the X, and then I just kind of lengthen this out to where I think that it, it needs to be. And I usually give myself a little bit more length than I need because when you start pushing these around, they, they shorten a little bit. And a good tip is if, if you did make some a little bit too long, I don't, I very rarely use this cut brush because of the way that it treats the CVs. So when you lengthen, when you use the lengthen brush, the CVs move out uniformly. When you use the, the cut brush, um, it will clip those CVs and it, there'll be an uneven distribution. And then you'll have to go and rebuild uh, but it, it can cause like crimping with the hair. It can cause the hair to act, uh, you know, buggy. So I think a better solution is take the length brush and just whatever is within the tip of the circle. I hold down control and it will decrease. So then I can just kind of just go around the edge. And it looks like I'm not getting one of these guides. Usually, you just have to approach it from a different angle. Oh, it looks like some of these never lengthened. It's okay. If you miss some, you can always go back and lengthen it. And then come in with that method and make them all uniform again. And then we have relatively uniform hair. Probably take these sideburns in a little bit more because they don't need to be as long. And I think that the base of the scalp, they can be a little bit shorter, a little bit longer on the top. All right, so that's good for now. And then I'm going to change the width parameters. Here it is. So for the width of the hair, usually I, I taper. 0.01 is the base, and then I, I'll taper the beginning and also the end. And I think this gives it a little bit more of a natural hair appearance. You can see those ends taper. You don't want to tape them too much because they'll have trouble rendering. But just enough. The beginning is nice uh, to taper because it gives you a softer transition between uh, where the scalp starts and uh, transitions into where the the hairline is and you can also affect that with uh, density maps which I'll show later on all right so this is good I usually hide the hair and just work with the guides from here and for this hairstyle it's not that complicated it's mostly going to be using modifiers to get the noisy and curly hair effect so I'm just gonna place everything roughly where it should be let me make sure this is symmetry on. Uh, and if you're getting interpenetration or clipping with the guides, you can select Collide with Mesh. Now this is only going to affect the plate that it's on. So if you'll notice that it will penetrate into the other plates and it will penetrate into the base mesh. 
So something to be careful about. And I usually use the comb brush once I have the, the length right. Um, the, the grab brush is also really useful and works pretty similar to the, the comb brush, especially if you have the preserve length clicked on. But I usually use it um, when I add in an additional guide and then I want to pull it into place. And without preserve length, you can just pick this and drag it wherever you'd like. Um, and it'll uh, stretch the CVs. You can see uh, where each one of those is. So it's the general shape is starting to get there. At this point, usually I'll lock off or I'll freeze uh, guides that I think are in the relatively right position. So I think this guide right here should be behind the ear, but if I start uh, combing it back, it'll affect ones that I think that are uh, shouldn't be moved. So I'm just going to go in and freeze. I'll freeze everything, shrink my brush way down, hold control, and then unfreeze that one. And then I can work on a single guide or multiple guides, whichever ones I choose to unfreeze. See, I'll freeze that one and then I'll unfreeze this one. I think this one needs to go back as well. And let's get that one into place. And then I'll turn back the hair on and see what that looks like. So that looks like everything's generally in the right place. I think this one is still not in the right place. So go back in your freeze brush, hit control, select which one you want unfrozen. And that's about right. So you'll see here there is clipping, the hair is clipping in to the ear. And this is something that I use this uh, a sculpt modifier for at the very end after I have all my other modifiers in place. And you can just grab the hair directly and, and push it out from clipping into your uh, base mesh. So that's a good base for the hair. Let me do, let me show you how I have the eyebrows done. I won't go through everything. Or I won't redo the eyebrows, but I'll show you how I have them set up. So turn on the hair. Freeze all. Make sure you're in the right layer. Unfreeze all. So yeah, this is how I have the eyebrows set up. And usually uh, towards the middle of the head, the eyebrows shoot straight up. Some people's eyebrows go or start here and, and uh, go, you know, parallel to the eye. Um, but most of the time I've seen they go straight up and then slowly transition. And then there's this kind of crosshatch effect where lashes or 
hairs from the top of the brow come down and hairs from the bottom of the brow go up and kind of intersect. So the hair is thickest in the middle. And it's not too easy to see because his eyebrow hairs are wild and all over the place from the noise. Um, but a cleaner eyebrow, you'd be able to see that it's thinner on the top and thinner on the bottom. Um, and the eyelash guides are pretty simple, exactly what you would expect. And usually they just shoot straight out from the, uh, from the tip of the eyelids. And the bottom ones have a little bit of a curl. The top ones you can curl up a little bit, but usually that's done with makeup. Um, naturally, they just kind of run uh, perpendicular to the, the tip of the eyelid. And I don't have any guides on the beard because it's short. And usually if it's just like stubble length, there's no need for guides. Um, you can just put in the description, dial in the length, and, um, and then use modifiers to change whatever parameters you'd like. All right, so that pretty much is it for how to set up your guides. Uh, and then in the next one, I will go over all the additional modifiers that I add onto it uh, on top and the correct order that I think they should go in. And hopefully this video was helpful. And please like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please comment below. I'll try to answer all of them as best I can. And thanks for watching.